Welcome to this surgical video on challenging surgical cases in ophthalmology. Today we have a very interesting case for you. This patient had a trabeculectomy bleb and we had to do a safe phacoemulsification preserving the bleb during surgery. On examination, this 57-year-old female, she had a history of decreased vision in the left greater than right eye post trabeculectomy with mitomycin last year. She was high myope and using anti-glaucoma medication before surgery. She developed hypotony sometime after trabeculectomy for which a superior subtenon canacord was given which resolved along with the uveitis she developed. Before surgery on examination, her visual acuity was 612 on the right eye and counting finger in the left eye. Interestingly, she had peripheral anterior synechy in the inferior 180 degrees. The anterior chamber was formed, but there was peripheral anterior synechy and she had a gonioscopy grade 1 angle on the right eye as well. A cataract examination showed a nucleus plus 3 cataract. Here you can she see she's got peripheral anterior synechy which have been highlighted with red and this and the pupil is small in size or mid dilated with posterior synechy formation. She diagnosis was post right and early left trap with mitomycin for left and right primary angle closure glaucoma, left greater than right cataract and resolved left anterior uveitis. And she was using Tobradex eye drops in the left eye three times a day and she was using Sinigan twice a day in both eyes and Vigamox because she had recent stitch removal. Surgical procedure involved a left phaco cataract extraction of the left eye. The cataract was more of a whitish cataract at a later just before surgery and uh, her axial length was 22.9. We did a subtenon local anesthesia. We went through a nasal approach. Had to go in very carefully. The incision was slightly anterior in order to go in front of the peripheral anterior synechy and had to be really slow that you could have a calculated entry so you can see the tunnel. So we went in to make that uh, dissection between the iris and the lens and there was a, some membrane that was preventing us going in that plane. So we went in with the utrata forcep and we got hold of that pupillary membrane. It is very, very important in patients with posterior synechy that you need to remove that pupillary membrane before you can actually do visco dissection between the iris and the lens. So once that's been done, there was some bleeding, but you can now easily inject viscoelastic and complete your visco dissection. So the membrane was removed 360 degree in the pupillary plane. Later the viscoelastic was removed and vision blue was injected to stain the anterior capsule of the lens. The pupil still remained pretty small so in plan we had uh, to do iris hooks to enlarge the pupil for surgery but because the cataract was pretty dense and there was no red reflex we went in to stain the pupil and it is good to do that before you do any iris hooks or anything there after visco dissection we try to see if we can open up the peripheral anterior synechy but not possible so using a 23 gauge needle we made entries in uh, three quadrants and later the fourth quadrant to go into the anterior chamber so once they, those are made, we put in iris hooks and we engaged in that area. Placing the iris hooks very carefully because the iris is atrophic in this patient, especially in this area. So you try to go from one side, then the other side. You can see the patches of atrophy. And the important thing when putting in iris hooks is that you need to, to engage the iris hook into the anterior capsule otherwise you can get a premature capsular tear that will prevent your CCC from being completed adequately. Then you after putting your viscoelastic in you initiate your CCC. I started off by making that initial CCC with the cystotome then completed with a 
you try to force us because you're doing it through the nasal incision sometimes because more challenging to complete that tcc especially the sub incisional part here you can see is pretty challenging and although i have dilated the pupil but uh, still the ccc seems to be not very big we'll see if you have to enlarge it at the end of the procedure then you do your careful hydro dissection in the two quadrants or i at least i, I do a, a, in the three quadrants as well then uh, start your phaco we plan to do a vertical chop in this patient after giving the first in groove making the first groove we have sculpting the groove we thought it would be pretty straightforward uh, uh, vertical divide and then or with chopping and but after rotating the nucleus we found that the pieces were not coming into the uh, phaco uh, probe very easily so what we did was sort of change it to a chip and flip technique for that we had to make the central groove small or deeper so the main thing whenever you have a problem with your nucleus disassembly is that you need to readdress the problem and then you go it slowly because already it's a pretty complicated case so you don't want to get a posterior capsular tear in these patients or inadvertently injure your ccc so as you can see we are disassembling the nucleus slowly and then rotating it and we've got a small chip already outside what is happening is whenever we tried to go in because i think it was difficult getting hold of that nucleus or getting a further grip of the nucleus to make vertical chop further chopping difficult so we had to sort of go in for that chipping and then we are flipping that nucleus now you can see we have disassembled a lot of that nucleus and the only uh, remnant smaller plate is left and we are getting that plate out once that is out then your major task has been done in phaco but the main thing to remember is you need to go in slowly and then complete your phaco then finish off that uh, cortical matter with the simco cannula and uh, first you go to areas which is in front of the cannula then coming from the opposite side for the sub incisional cortex and uh, you can see that there was good hydro dissection and we could get all the cortex out pretty easily you can see that whitish thing at the back that is in the vitreous then we are putting in viscoelastic and because the ccc was small we make a small neck with vanna scissors because if go through a small ccc and try to put a foldable iul sometime it gets stuck and you have to put it in the sulcus so after making the initial cut we try to pull it toward ourselves but that's not happening so we went through the other side and then completed or enlarged the ccc so that is a very crucial step you need to have the anterior chamber deep before you make that cut otherwise you can make a rupture in the posterior capsule then you go in with your injectable where you're using a multi piece Al alcon acrisoft iul that was the main important thing with small ccc is get that first haptic into the mag if you don't get that then you'll be in trouble so after doing that we were getting the superior haptic in the bag with a uh, macpherson forceps and just trying to nudge it through into the into the bag that usually happens very uh, easily but unfortunately we ended up putting in the sulcus and then you had to pull that haptic from the sulcus and then drop it into the bag that is a very challenging step but if you know how to do that it takes you out a lot of difficult situations when the haptic is not gone into the bag then you remove your iris hooks and do hydration of your wound to make it watertight and you don't want to be uh, have intraocular pressure very high post operatively the because the patient has coma so we have this case finished nicely the blab is intact the wound is present nasally we give subconjunctival injection so what are the surgical pearls in this the choice of incision site is very important good iris dilation with iris hook is essential visco dissection for posterior synecy is mandatory and chamber control during surgery is very very important iul selection and placement in the bag is necessary and in the end 
protect the blood at all times during surgery. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video and please subscribe to our channel to get the latest updates. Thank you.